I'm sitting here with Peter Sims, the author of Little Bets, How Breakthrough Ideas Emerge from Small Discoveries. He's also the founder of Little Bets Labs. Co-founder, yeah, absolutely. Co-founder, yeah. which is, and, and it's, it's a place where you're actually putting to use all the lessons that you've learned in Little Bets. Trying to. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me. It's great to be here, John. The, the place to start really is, is to just talk a little bit about the book. What is, what is the crux of Little Bets, Peter? It's, it's basically this, is that when we see, we hear people say they would do something new if they just had a big idea. They would do something entrepreneurial. They would take a different career path, let's say. It's really at odds with reality of what the creative process takes, which is if you're, just to use an example of a comedian, right? We see Chris Rock, we see Jerry Seinfeld. They're perfect, they're flawless, they've got great ideas, but to get there they've spent months in small clubs trying lots of ideas one after the other after the other. These are what I call little bets, these small experiments that you can use to discover needs, problems, opportunities through an iterative process and call it little bets because it's lower risk and it's an affordable loss, which is not something they ever taught me. I went through business school. And it's not something they teach most of us, how to think in a more creative way. And a little bit is just the vehicle to open that up. There are so many industries nowadays that are going through massive change, right? If you're in, in healthcare or insurance, everything's changing because of the Affordable Care Act. If you are in technology, everything is changing because of the cloud. If you no. are in any old world business like media, um, Apple and Facebook alone are disrupting those. No. If you're a manager in one of those companies, what lessons should they take away from little bets and put to use right away? I think this idea of being imperfect at first, trying a small bet, can be the, the Trojan horse that unlocks the opportunity for people with their Apple, which has a culture of little bets already, or a place like Ford or General Motors where you know, there's such a high bar and high risk aversion. So that's my hope, is just to give people some ways of thinking and, 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 and working that can allow them to unlock their own creative potential. You know, if, if I'm sitting at Ford or GM or some big company or, or God forbid something that's regulated like health insurance, right. um, I say, okay, that's fine for coming up with, a, with an iPhone app, but my stuff is big, heavy capital things or it's got all sorts of a, you know, crazy you know, legal issues and ramifications. Maybe this little bit stuff isn't for me. I just recently did an event with my colleagues at Little Best Labs with the American College of Physician Executives, 200 physician executives. And so it's a talk followed by a you know, four-hour event. And they're thinking about how do they reform the healthcare industry. Big problem, big question. Right. I mean, where do you even begin? And right. so if you look at where a lot of innovation comes from, and you know this from your experience, you break things apart into lots of small pieces. You, you smallify, as Ben Gordon Kleiner Perkins here puts it, the problem into many small pieces. And what these executives came up with are things like, well, we could do these little experiments where you give people a card to show whether or not they're eating right and you know, use like a very simple web app to be able to see if they're eating right and that that could have a big impact on this overall problem. It could have a huge impact on this overall problem. And, and little things like this that they could be doing just in their jobs. Mm -hmm. It suggests that maybe some of these huge things uh, that, that we're grappling with, whether it's healthcare or education, are not intractable things that, that no individual can take a shot at. What's one thing that you think that they should do tomorrow that would yeah. start them down the track of actually thinking in terms of little bets rather than you know, big honking problems. Well, Dave, I think you put your finger on when you say, what can you do tomorrow? That's actually, I've been amazed when sharing this with audiences, that's one of the things that sticks with them the most, is to say, well, what can I do tomorrow? Yeah. And for everyone, it's a different answer, but they can usually think of something small, whether it's restructuring a meeting or coming up with a prototype to put right. in front of a potential customer right. or, you know, going through and, and actually, you know, trying an idea out in front of an audience, like, yeah. like a comedian might, where they where they're able to just do something tomorrow. And that's like the biggest takeaway I've seen from a lot of these audiences who hear about little bets. So one thing you can do tomorrow is that you should ask yourself, what's what the one thing I can do tomorrow? tomorrow. That's the like irony. <laughs> that's awesome. That's totally awesome. That's fantastic. So you answer the question with the question. That's fantastic. That's very sad. Thanks, my job. Uh, well, the nature of Jump Talks is that you know most of it is not recorded, and we're going to go from here into an 
kind of a more in-depth conversation where what happens at Jump Talks stays at Jump Talks. Um, but before that, for everyone who's watching this online, I just want to say thank you, Peter, for, for coming to Jump, and um, thank you for writing Little Bets. It's probably the best book on design thinking and entrepreneurship I've read in a long time. Well, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks All for having best. me. Sure. Appreciate it.